There was a comedian some years ago who began his routine and had the same refrain a number of times throughout, and he'd say, the whole world has gone crazy. This was a number of years ago. We all laughed and we agreed, yes, the whole world has gone crazy, but I wonder what he would say today. The whole world has gone crazy. We've got boys can be girls, girls can be boys. We've got two male boxers competing for the, for the women's championship at the Olympics. The whole world has gone crazy. And you say to yourself, how do we cut through this? How do we anchor ourselves? How do we see the light? How do we walk in the truth? The answers are to be found in today's gospel because Jesus wants to feed us on love and truth. That's what he's going to give us today. So he starts off by saying, I am the bread that came down from heaven. Now they argued among themselves right away and they said, how can he say he came down from heaven? Isn't this Joseph? Don't we know Joseph his father? Is it Mary his mother? Well, actually, Joseph is foster father. And then something even more mysterious is happening with Mary because she's espoused to Joseph, but Mary conceives by the power of the Holy Spirit. And God became man in her womb by the power of the Holy Spirit. So this Jesus who was born to us isn't just anybody else, not a real swell guy and a really nice guy, really wise man. He's the God-man. And the God-man entered our world to teach us the truth in love. Those two things, side by side, connected together in him. The truth in love. And as we stay close to Jesus, we cut through all of the nonsense in our world. We anchor ourselves. We've got a clear light. Our compass works. We see the way that we ought to go because we're not blown around by the mass media and the population around us, which is all disturbed and, and sometimes agreeing with nonsense. Instead, our anchor is Jesus. He's the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. He's the bread that came down from heaven. Now notice we say he's the incarnate one. Incarnation means the enfleshment of God. Carne means flesh. He's the enfleshed God, God in our midst. And so he's not just any ordinary human being, he's the God-man. And when he speaks, he speaks what he knows from heaven. He knows the eternal truths. He sees through all of our lies, our self-deceptions, the ways in which we package our, our messages so as to get people to do what we want. He sees through all of that. And he gives us the truth in love. So Jesus is different. Where did he get all this? Isn't Joseph his father? Well, actually, no. Mary, our mother, yes, but more than you might think, the spouse of the Holy Spirit. And it says, he says, they shall all be taught by God. The scripture says that, and Jesus is saying, I'm God. I'm the one. I'm the one who speaks to you. The one who speaks to you is the one. And so Jesus is revealing himself. He wants to feed us. He wants to give us the truth. Now in all of this, there's, the first is the invitation to prayer. And you and I need to open ourselves to God, not just learning about him. We have to come to know him. We have to come to love him. And there's an invitation to prayer. So what I want you to do, because you don't want to be swept away by the world and all the nonsense around us, I want you to start with minimum. 15 minutes a day. Not just any 15, the same 15. I want you to get to bed, get a good night's sleep. I want you to pray in the morning before you've opened up your phone, before you've read everything else in the world, before you've let the news bother you. I want you to give 15 minutes to God. Now you might take something like the daily bread, a wonderful little, little pamphlet which we have in the back of the church for you. You might get the Magnificat. You look up the daily readings for Mass and you read through those readings and you allow God to speak to you. You say, Lord, or maybe it's the biggest problem on your mind. It's that, that thing right there. It's a, job, a problem of the job or the family or the marriage, whatever it is. That's the thing you talk to God about. And I want you to talk with him and I want you to listen. He's waiting for us. He wants to speak to us. When you go to your room and close the door and pray to your father in secret, and he speaks. He guides us. Have your Bible with you. Ask your aunt the questions that you have for him. Let him speak to your heart. He wants to guide you into all truth. He will never contradict the teachings of the church. He's never going to lead you outside of the church. He's always going to lead you back into the fullness of the faith. He's going to lead you to the sacraments. He's going to give you the bread of life. 
but he's also going to feed your mind and your heart. And you're not just going to know about God, you're going to know God because you've spent time with him. He wants to do this. And this listening is very important. And it's listening that's supposed to happen in prayer, but there's a kind of listening that happens all kinds of moments throughout the day. It could happen even, even on a fishing trip where you're standing out there in the river and the river's going by and you're listening to what God has to say. Listen to what Jesus says here within this passage. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Now that's important because the Father is the one who created all things. The Father created. It's his plan. He did it through the Son and in the Holy Spirit, but the Father created. If we deny creation, we've denied the Father. If we don't recognize God's fingerprints on creation, we'll never come to Jesus. They're interconnected. In other words, there's natural revelation and supernatural revelation. The Father created everything. We can see the plan of God. We can see the way that he did things. His fingerprints are all over creation. The mystery of the human eye, the imaging, the, the focusing, the balancing, all of these things are mysterious that be part of our lives. And we find that they all somehow evolved in every species and at the same time, not so much. There's a creator and he created and we see his handiwork in creation. When you find that the salmon have gone out for four years to swim in the ocean and they come back to exactly the same stream and exactly the same rivulet where they were, where they were born and you say, oh, that was just dumb luck. That was just by evolution. That just happened by accident. Not so much. What you're seeing is the handiwork of God. Everyone who sees, listens to my father and learns from him comes to me. We find the handiwork of God in creation. He's revealed himself. He's shown himself. Every species has these qualities. And he made them male and female. That's an indicator. Male and female because they're complementary and they need each other. Male and female because there's only two sexes. Don't allow yourself to be swept away by the nonsense presented in media and in education and academia and in the culture that there's an infinite variety. No, there's male and female. And we have to grow to learn to accept these two and to grow into the roles that accompany them. Can you imagine that? God's fingerprints are all over creation. And those who listen to the Father and learn from him come to Jesus. Those who reject the Father's work in creation tend to reject Jesus coming to save us. So this is significant. This embracing of creation is to embrace the Father. Don't throw that away. That's not separate. That's not like, like oh, church is here and creation's out there. They're connected. It's the Father who created. And when we learn from him, we come to Jesus. Now he created them male and female, no accident. And again, we find that the human species, he even ennobled more. He made them in the image and likeness of God. Gave us an eternal soul. Gave us a dignity. Gave us a, a communion of love. A higher purpose than the animals would ever know. And he gives us marriage and family as a lifelong commitment. A civilization that's, that's the fruit of this stable marriage. By the way, think about that. Civilization is the fruit of stable marriage and values being handed on to children. Chaos is the result of the end of marriage and no values being handed on to the next generation. The fingerprints of God are on creation. Everyone who listens to the Father and learns from him comes to Jesus. So don't set that aside. Don't separate those worlds. They're connected. Just like here, we have God the Father, we have the Holy Spirit, we have Jesus. The Father created all things. Jesus was present in this creation. We say in the creed, through him all things were made. And the Holy Spirit comes to sanctify us. This is the, fa this is the mystery of the Trinity. His fingerprints are all over creation. So again, we have this, this mystery of civilization. And again, it reveals... Things that you won't find in the common education today, you're going to find that the only place of sex is in marriage. Whoa, that's counterculture. I thought this was recreation. I thought this was forever whenever I would want to, with anyone, at any time. And all that was needed was consent. No, the place of sex is in marriage between a husband and a wife. And that's the bond between them. John Paul says it's the food of the marriage. It's that important, that necessary, that it be bountiful between husband and wife, that they should stay together their whole life long. This is part of the mystery. The world doesn't know this. 
but God's fingerprints are on creation. These are challenges to the rest of the culture. We find that there are misuses of sexuality. Do you know it was Freud himself, Sigmund Freud, who says that any use of sex that precludes new life, that precludes reproduction, any use of sex that precludes reproduction is a perversion. Wow, our world has become perverse, widely accepted, yet perverse. Alternative lifestyles being everywhere, and somehow those are being not only accepted, but being somehow made normal in our world, and that's a mistake. And with that also is gonna come all kinds of deviousness, all kinds of maliciousness. All of these things are being seen in our world right now. And you and I say, this craziness, this can't be the way. How do I cut through all of the nonsense? How do I see the light? The answer is the bread of life. It's Jesus, and it's his Father, because everyone who learns from the Father comes to Jesus. And he feeds us in two special ways. He feeds us in the communion of love, and he feeds us in the communion of truth. We're meant to know the truth. The truth is what we were made for. He is the truth. He's the way, the truth, and the life. We need to know the truth. And again, the lies that are everywhere are monstrance. And you and I have to reject all of this monstrous evil around us. We were made for the truth. And so you have to sort through it. Don't just accept everything that's said to you. And right now, so many things are upside down that you and I have to cut through it and not accept it. Don't just say, well, everybody says it must be good, it must be good. Well, for instance, just in the Christmas season, we heard that this song was something that was simply not acceptable. Baby, it's cold outside. Remember that song? Back from the 40s? We are told that that's a horrible song, that that's a terrible thing. No one should ever say a thing like that. That's somehow to misuse every other human being in the world. Somehow this is a terrible thing. And yet, at the same time, WAP won the Grammys. You can look that up. I'm not going to tell you what WAP stands for. You look that up. You Google that. WAP at the Grammys. This won the Grammys. It's one of the most perverse and immoral songs that you could ever imagine. That's okay, but baby, it's cold outside is wrong. So these are called lies. It's upside down. It's not true. So don't just say, well, there must be a different understanding. No, it's called a lie. We find our own governor. Our own governor was calling people weird who believe in marriage and family. Yet his own party is the party of death and deviancy. Don't just say, well, it's okay, it's a different understanding. No, it's wrong. It's a lie. And if we embrace the lie, we're in trouble. If we speak the lie, it enters into us. It's a wonderful book I'd like you all to consider. We're gonna propose this even for all of our small groups in the, in the, in the synod. And it's called Live Not By Lies. That term comes to us from Solzhenitsyn living under Soviet totalitarian communism. And he used that in many ways. It's also been renewed now in this book by Rod Dreher, Live Not By Lies. He interviewed many people who had come from the Soviet Union and they, they lived under the totalitarianism, the lies that were everywhere. And they say that they lied to us. We knew that they were lying. They knew that we knew that they were lying and all the rest. And the whole, the whole culture was working on lies. And they said, it's coming back. We see it in the West. We see it all over in America. We see the new lies emerging, a different form, maybe a more passive aggressive form, but we see the lies. And he's gonna say to you, live not by lies. These are stories, these are things you should read, you should, you should brush up on. So because when you see a lie and you're told you have to say the lie, as soon as you say it, you become part of it. You become compromised. When you say things like, gay is okay, you've entered into the lie. It's not okay, it's deformed, it's a misuse, it's not the right thing. When you say all of these things like, love is love, sounds great, but it's a lie. These things are misuses. When we enter into it, when we begin to voice it ourselves, we enter into darkness and the light isn't in us. And Jesus is the light, he's the truth, he's the way. And so we have to learn from the Father and come to Jesus. So these are opportunities for us because the whole world has gone crazy, but not Jesus. He's the one still giving us the way, the truth, and the life. 
So we want to get ourselves together here. We want to find the right way. We want to find ourselves and lead ourselves to the bread of life. We need the Heavenly Father who, learning from him, we come to Jesus. This is the way of salvation. Again, Jesus is the only salvation of the world. In him, we find our hope.